we have an avatar of Watson right. here. What does Watson really look like under well, the hood? Well, this is Watson's face, I guess, which is a, at least colorful. You know, it's interesting when you contrast it with some of uh, uh, Rodney's work. You know, we, we st when we started with uh, Watson, we, um, we did not want to anthropomorphize it because we really wanted to focus on, on the core technology. Uh, the technology of sort of under, trying to understand language and answering with precise question, uh, answering with precise answers and with probabilities or confidences associated with that. And we really didn't want to put a robot on stage, but ultimately we had to put something. And um, we, we chose to put something sort of more abstract. But of course, this is just Watson's face. Watson's brain is about 10 refrigerators worth of hardware. So this is equivalent to about, you know, uh, six or seven thousand, you know, desk, you know, powerful, powerful desktop computers. So it's a lot of uh, uh, work going on in Watson's brain to try to just answer a question. And what's interesting is if you compare that to to the human. So Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter got up there, and they have brains that sort of fit, fit in a shoebox and are powered by a tuna fish sandwich and a glass of water. Um, you know, Watson needed 80 kilowatts of electricity and about 20 tons of air conditioning uh, to compete at a similar task. And and Watson couldn't, couldn't walk in and couldn't converse with you and tell jokes, whereas Ken and Brad could. So the human brain is actually quite, quite remarkable. Is Watson the world's first English fluent database? I wouldn't really think of it that way. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by English fluent or database, but I do have a story to tell you. You know, um, I was interviewed by a uh, radio show host, uh, radio, uh, show host um, from San Francisco, and it was a live interview. And um, he asked me, you know, so, so let me get this right. So you, you have this database, so it's kind of like a spreadsheet table, and you put all the questions in one column, and you put all the answers in the second column, and then the clue appears, and Watson looks for that clue and reads out the answer, right? So no. <laughs> not only didn't Watson have the questions, not only didn't have the answers, it didn't even have the questions ahead of time, it had no idea what it was gonna be asked. And the radio show host said, well then how do you do it? I said, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> So how do so, you do it? Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, there are obviously, you know, really um, a lot of challenges in there. In fact, I wanted to share some uh, with you. If we look at a few Jeopardy questions, I'll point out a few really interesting challenges about a natural language. I think they're going to appear maybe up on the screen. Yeah, there you go. So here was a, uh, a clue. The, um, the category was decorating, and the clue is if you're standing, it's the direction you should look to check out the Wayne's coding. Anybody have any idea what the answer is? Damn, very good. You know. What's interesting about, about this question, though, is that you know, it asks for a direction. And if you think, well, gee, how would I tell the computer about what a direction is? And you can think, well, you know, there's north, south, east, and west, or maybe I want to model direction by you know, um, or, uh, telling it about all the degrees around a compass, or maybe I want to do sort of um, a, um, you know, behind my back, in front of my nose. I mean, there's all different ways to model a direction and to think, here's where the answers are going to come from. But let's look at another Jeopardy clue. Um, this one is the direction of threads in a fabric is called this, like the patterns of, of fiber and wood. The answer is actually grain. So if I had limited, my, limited myself or if I had limited the computer to only think about you know, the directions that I could think of and list them, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have imagined that the computer wouldn't be able to, to connect very different sorts of directions in different contexts to the answer. So natural language is sort of hard when you think about all the context in which languages, uh, words are used and what they might mean in those very varied contexts. So, so how is Watson figuring out the meaning? What it does is it relies a lot on reading lots and lots of content and looking at how words are used in the context, so around other words, and computing probabilities, likelihoods that they would be used in, the, in, uh, in these different contexts and not relying on sort of strict databases that say these are the five different directions and that's it or whatever it is. So there has to be a lot more flexible with language, if you will. I think I have another, I have another one to look at here. So here's uh, Lincoln Blogs. And, um, uh, Treasury Secretary Chase just submitted this to me, uh, just submitted to me, uh, this to me for the third time. Guess what, pal? This time I'm accepting it. So that's the clue. Do you have any idea what the answer is? Uh, I I'm submit a, a resignation. Resignation. Now, did you know? What is a resignation? That's right. So, what is a resignation? You got it right. Uh, Two hundred dollars. So, um, what um, what do you 
did you know the historical fact? Not, so not Don't be embarrassed about. if you didn't. No, 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 no so, at all. No. So, you know, how'd you get it? You got it because of the context. You thought, well, what kinds of things are typically submitted? Submitted. Exactly. And moreover, so if you, you start thinking in your head, well, what kinds of things are submitted? What kinds of things are submitted by a treasury secretary? When a president's involved, what's it worth even mentioning? And you can sort of infer that, it, that, that it's a resignation. Watson actually does something similar. Um, contrary to sort of popular belief, not all the answers are exactly spelled out anywhere in the content. So connecting the answers to the language is not like looking something up in a database. So Watson will read lots of text and it'll compute probabilities about what's likely an answer in this context. And that will give it a clue and then it'll try to sort of prove it or get evidence that that's in fact the case. But when I um, gave this talk to a, a sixth grade, they used that context and they came up with a very different answer. Their answer was, <laughs> what is it? 